Hello? Anyone there? Ugh, ew, do I really look like that? No wonder people avoid me. Huh? Nani? <laughs> So guys, funny story. It's been like three and a half-ish years since I had first ever seen Toradora, and I'm not gonna lie, I have never once rewatched it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know. But it's kind of crazy, right? You take a look at the stuff I put out in the past, and a lot of it's Toradora. <laughs> I've even built sort of a reputation amongst, like, people that know me and my close friends as the Toradora guy. So dumbass, why have you never seen your favorite show more than once? I'll get into that. But in order to understand that more, let me give you a deeper idea of my relationship with this show. I feel like everybody kind of has that one piece of fiction that really struck at the perfect time to where it resonated with you no matter where you were at. And that ended up like, no matter the quality of whoever else may see it, will always stick with you and be special. And I think that was Toradora for me. No amount of people barking up your ear about stats or animation or whatever the fuck is gonna bother you or take away from your enjoyment of this show, okay? And after watching this one, way back then, it just stuck with me. The characters, the sense of community, the vibrant world. Hooked. Torzora had everything that you could ask for in that regard. In life, there are times where you're kind of lost. So when you're a little lost, and you're surrounded by shit that you're not sure about, and you're driven to find an answer to whatever that may be, us as people tend to immerse ourselves into something more ideal, or at least something that makes more sense that we could comprehend. I didn't have much going on when I first watched Toradora. It was during the whole pandemic thing while I was still at the prime of its powers. The type of student I was in school was the one who was waiting for it to end, so that could give you an idea of where I was. I was checked out. <laughs> I'd only really give much energy to playing games online and watching YouTube videos. That was kinda it. This may seem like random information, but it's all kinda to put into perspective where I was at when I first watched the show, the very first time. You honestly might have heard me tell this story before because I have a while ago, like three years back, similar to when I first saw it. But it was one night where I couldn't sleep, just didn't have much going on. Sleep schedule was definitely a mess and I didn't know what to do. I was like so bored, I had to do something. It was like, I was could either start trying to make a new video, I could um, go listen to music or something, go play a game, or I could start a new anime. And I'm one of those people that it like takes so long to start one because you know how long your backlog can get? And it's like, well, I already have to watch all of these and like you kind of rank them in order of priority. So it's crazy and it all gets convoluted and all bundled and messed up in your head to where you never even watch any of them, it's fun. But tonight the vibes were something you guys could probably relate to. The vibes were a little gloomy. So we looked up rom-com and I don't know if any of you guys have been down bad on those nights. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it, it takes me, it, it, rom-com is not usually the first choice, you know, it's like, it, It'll take something to get you to that level. <laughs> but it was a rom-com kind of night. It was something to try to immerse into you real quick. Just like, let me see something. I had no clue what to expect. Sometimes you just want a good love story to immerse into. But yeah, I had no clue what I was getting into. And I was very immersed into it indeed. I binged it all in like a day and a half, I believe. And even when I was finishing uh, shows at that time, I was taking long breaks, like partway through and all that stuff so that was kind of a big deal at the time like it was the first one i truly binged and you guys know toradora you guys know what's in store in that show you guys have seen it yourselves the show's kind of sad man okay chill huh? brief intermission i'm just kind of let it be known I, I feel like this is how so many toradora fans act after the ending uh, i'm looking back at old messages of myself and my friends which would be on screen bro i'm trying to see a wedding <laughs> nothing else what the fuck <laughs> this one's while i was watching and as you can see like it, it made its way into the group chat it was it was a very known and that's what I was doing. I was giving constant updates about that show. <laughs> I said, anime gods are fucking evil. They ended the show like that. Never a season two. I gotta see more, damn it. What the fuck? I need more. I need you. Fuck off. My friend asked if we watched it in dub, just trying to ask if it was good. And my friends were saying it was good. I say, I swear every day I try to forget about this show and somebody talks about it. I see Julius is watching it. Then I think about the sad again. Fuck you, Julius. I miss Toradora. I get it. <laughs> I was being so annoying. You really feel no post-anime depression? <laughs> PID? I really don't. I'm not as emotionally impacted as I should be. That means you're more content in life than me, believe it or not. Damn. We barely got any of Ryuji and Saiga. Ah. I summon you, please speak to me. I was trying to find answers. Guys, you, <laughs> that feeling, <laughs> that emptiness, I need more. But no, we already know. There was no season two. I was looking for season two everywhere. I don't know why, why my dumbass thought I was gonna find it. No millions of fans before looking for it found it. I don't know why my dumbass thought I had a chance. <laughs> Unfortunately, but realistically, the grasp that Toradora originally had on me 
on that night where I found it was most likely because of loneliness. I still remember the long night walks that I took when I finished watching that show, feeling like I missed out. Not so that I was thinking like, if I had lived a life comparable to one of the characters in the show I just saw, that would have been way, way better. That would have been way more fun. Look at the world they live in. And while many of them had many of their own problems, they were still living in a breathable world where they had each other. And events like the trip to Tommy's beach house, the Christmas party, or the ski trip would only amplify the bonds of these characters. And when you're as immersed as I was when watching, it almost feels like you are living there for a bit. I think that is where a lot of the pain comes from from the ending, at least for me, because after the immersion breaks and the curtains close, it's kind of a you're back on your own moment to where you were struggling to ever navigate properly to begin with. The fiction that I lived through for a few days concluded, and I had ironically felt more alone afterward than when before I started the show. You could say I was mad at life, in a sense where it showed you this depiction of how you could live, but it felt so far out of reach and impossible to ever actually have, if that makes sense. That creates the feelings of needing closure, and maybe why a lot of the fans just wanted to see more of where Ryuji and Taiga went next. I said his name weird, I know, you don't have to bring it up. After days of immersion in both of their lives and watching them both going from being lonely to finally figuring out what they were searching for, makes the cutoff a little bit of a punch to the gut for anybody in a similar kind of situation to that. I was very passionate about the show for a while after finishing it, despite only seeing it once. Um, I kind of didn't want to let go of it, um, so I started an abridged project to kind of even forge my own continuation of the story. That's how into it I was, like just to keep it going, keep living through it, you know? Um, but that phase ended over time and we stopped doing the show over time due to whatever reasons, uh, things end, unfortunately. And I just threw it out of my memory. It, like after I was over it, I just kind of stopped thinking about it. <laughs> All it was to me at that point was a reminder of what I felt like I missed out on despite still loving the show dearly and thinking it was great and the characters were great and it was well told, but that's all I kind of remembered it as, like when I'd think about it and I'd give it a thought. So if we fast forward to the present, not really the present because I watched it in December and I'm recording this in February, but let's roll with it. It's a good time to watch it again and talk about it again. <laughs> Let us revisit it together. I feel very different to the person I was three years ago. I've grown and I'm becoming happier with the person that I am, putting in work daily to mold myself into someone I'm proud of. In December 2023, it had felt like the right time to watch it again. Tordor is one of those unofficial kind of Christmas shows that just feels right to watch around the holidays. The snow, it just, it hits. See? I was curious how I would feel watching it this time and if I would even still like it due to my circumstances being so different. But after completing it years later, the world is just appealing as it ever was, especially in a world of normalized degeneracy. A peaceful life with real problems where people actually seem to care is still extremely captivating and appeals now more than ever. It's a show that teaches you lessons. It's the show where everyone, even the minor characters, are people. It's a world. It's, it's breathable. It'll make you think about new things in a different perspective just off of the way that people talk and view life. It could potentially make you want to adapt a similar way of viewing things because it resonates with you how somebody feels. If you hadn't lived a similar life to what you're watching, which chances are you're not a fucking happy-go-lucky kid, high schooler in Japan, going on these trips and forming these undeniable bonds, it still doesn't mean there isn't something that you could take away and like things you could take away from this fiction that you can implement into your own existence and daily living. The beautiful thing about any show as well is like, I mentioned loneliness a lot, but I feel like a show where we're as attached to the characters and world with good world building and like a likable uh, cast uh, does a lot to um, resonate and immerse with oneself and can become a show of comfort. People have a lot of comfort shows and if someone feels like that's you, it's almost kind of like a friend. It's a place that you can go at a time where it might have once hurt you, <laughs> but after you already know and love the world, it could really be a cool place. <laughs>